Hey there YouTube, Travis here. I have another Pook moped, but finally I get one that's not a Maxi. So this is my new to me 1978, uh, well, I'm not quite sure yet. This is either a Pinto, a Swinger, or a Free Spirit, and I haven't had too much time to investigate just yet. Usually there's a decal on the tank which lets you know, um, and some other stickers that didn't take the horsepower, but None of that is on here. The only like tags left on the bike are the VIN tag and the little tag that tells you how much air pressure to put in the tires. So I'm not totally sure right now. Um, the person I bought it from said it's a JC Penny Swinger, but we will see. So, I'm um, actually in the process of shooting another video right now. I'm shooting one that talks about the things I do before I do a first start on a moped. And uh, I thought I'd take some time, take a break from that, and explain, well, not really explain, but kind of just do an overview of this bike. Sometimes I wonder if these mopeds could talk what they'd say. This one has had some interesting repairs done to it over the years, and uh, some, are, some are good, some are not so good. Let's take a closer look. Well, actually, first, let me say that I probably paid a little bit too much for this bike. Um, I paid about $150 for it. But, I do have a few things going my way. First is that it's not seized up, and it actually feels like it's got some pretty good compression. So I'm hopeful. Uh, also, the carb is not all seized up. Throttle moves the slide in it. So that's also hopeful as well. Um, I also have going on my side that this is a removable tank, which is good because it's quite rusty. We'll take a quick look here. Oh yeah, I gotta take that uh, cup off of here. I've had to fish too many of these out of tanks. So it's bad, um, but it's savable. That great, great smell of old gas I'm so familiar with at this point. Ugh. Speedometer reads 2200 miles. This does have the 40 mile an hour speedometer, which is cool. I'm pretty excited. Uh, this bike has some nicer features. It has the 1.5 person's seat. It has the snowflake mag wheels. The 40 mile an hour speedo and I'm pretty sure that's just a 12 carb but it could be a 14 millimeter bing. I cannot read the numbers on it because it is so grimy. <laughs> Unfortunately. I do know it's 12 intake so it's probably a 12 carb but we'll see. So I like this frame a lot. It's pretty cool. I know that it's I think that this one is the one that's identical to a Magnum frame, save the crossbar, gas tank, and Magnum seat, of course. So I could always do some sort of top tank conversion on this and it would look pretty good. Um, but I think the future for this bike is I'm probably going to end up selling the Pook High Torque right there, which right now serves the purpose of um, being the stock loaner bike that I love to hand out because this is a much cooler stock loaner bike. Um, I'll do a first start here as soon as I finish all my prep work, but uh, I'm hopeful. So a few things about this bike that stuck out to me. Oh, one more thing. Uh, it's got the nice chrome front fender and what makes this front fender unique um, is that when it connects to the down tubes it comes out a little further than a maxi front fender and you can get away with running some wider tires up front without having to modify the fender or anything like that so that's kind of nice too anyway so this thing's had some interesting repairs done to it first thing I noticed I I cannot believe these would be original I guess they could be but I don't think so these bicycle style little brake levers um, those are going to go I do not like them um, also, it's got an Italian switch up here, a CEV style switch for the run stop, kind of interesting. Usually the, the chrome ones like these don't break unless it's, as this one's broken, the plastic part here. Usually it's the, uh, like these kind of plastic ones that I've seen broken. Ugh. Anywho, so it's got an Italian switch up here, um, the pedal threads are stripped out. For this, I ain't going to be able to thread anything through there. And on the other side, it looks like we've got some welding done there to secure that pedal. Nice plastic bicycle pedal right there. Also, go ahead and check this out. 
So here's the rear tire, and I notice it's not original, which is usually a plus. Um, looks like it's a Yokohama tire, but it is not the right size. So it's a 17, of course, but the first clue that I got here was, well, looks like we've got some rubbing right here. This is a two and a half inch rear tire, which on a stock swing arm is a bit of a stretch. I went ahead and adjusted these uh, chain tensioners back here for <laughs> the best I could. It took me a little bit. And I got it to a point where it doesn't rub. Well, maybe it does a tiny bit. It's very close. It'll be okay for a first startup, but I think what's kind of funny here is that somebody put this tire on and then just ran it. You can see on both sides here, it's got a lot of wear. So the tire's in good shape. There's no dry rotting or cracking, and it's got great tread. So I'm probably going to move this over to another moped that has an aftermarket swing arm that allows for wider tires, and I'll have a new tire put on here that's coming in a few days. But man, somebody really stood there and said, yep, this is fixed and and wrote it so thought that was kind of funny what else so electrical tape to hold this throttle assembly without sliding I've seen that plenty of times what else um, we're missing so that's not the original throttle cable of course we're missing the bendy part up top here um, but it still seems to function so we'll see how that goes. I gotta make sure this cable is able to move the throttle slide up all the way because I don't know if it's got the full range of motion. It's got these <laughs> man these nice BMX style pegs on the back for passenger time. That's that's great. Um, probably gonna leave those. those. Those are pretty fun looking. This bike I'll probably clean up. Um, it's going to be a lot of work between the pressure washing and the sanding, but uh, well, I'll replace the stock pipe. I've got three or four stock pook pipes. That's not a big deal. But uh, all in all, I couldn't pass this one up. Wanted to finally get a pook that's not just another maxi. And everything about it seems to be, well, it's mostly complete. I have one side cover, which I took off. Um, I had to cut the drive chain off because that was one solid piece, uh, but I have plenty of spare chain around, so that's not a huge deal. So yeah, man, if this thing could talk. Oh yeah, we also have a horn delete up here, um, which if I didn't know any better could pose a problem. I gotta take those wires and uh, get them put together, because on a pook, the horn is grounded into the ignition circuit. So if your horn is missing, or if it's broken, uh, you can sometimes get a no start scenario. So I'll take care of that. But otherwise, it's mostly all there. I don't know if it's the decals were just peeled off or if it's been repainted. It's got this interesting red accents right there. I don't know if those are original or not. And so yeah, we'll see. Um, I might be able to get away with just starting this thing up without having to rebuild it, which would be awesome. I also have no idea what model this is, whether it's the one, one and a half or two horsepower model, so we will find out. Um, I've only ever owned one and a half horsepower models, so this will be quite interesting. So yeah, YouTube, you can follow me here. You'll get to see a first start video once I wrap up uh, my prep work here. I'm partway through, I tested for compression, we'll be testing for spark here in a little bit. And then I'm going to be adding my external tank. I've got some, some interesting ideas for de-rusting this one, which will probably be another video. Okay, YouTube, well, hope you enjoyed this find. You keep track, see how it goes, and uh, until next time.